Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to talk in our series on business ethics and CSR. Dear friends, in our previous session we discussed on a holistic approach of decision making. Today also we are going to discuss more on the topic. We are going to start from the point where we left in our previous session as well as we are going to discuss on corporate social responsibility in detail in the later half. Friends, for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios, Dr. Namita Rajput. Dr. Namita Rajput is a prolific professor and currently she is principal in Sri Aurobindo Evening College, University of Delhi. Dr. Rajput is a prolific professor as well as she is an author of numerous books. Her books are admired by the students worldwide. Friends, if you wish to ask questions from Dr. Namita Rajput on today's topic, then do call us through our toll free number. Our number is 1800110430. I repeat, our number is one eight double zero double one zero four three zero. Friends, you are requested to talk to us in the last ten minutes of the lecture only, as well as your question should be pertaining to the topic too. Now, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Namita Rajput, once again, and would request her to continue further. Hello, ma'am. Welcome to the lecture. Good morning, friends. In the last session, we talked about the holistic approach to decision making. and which needs more elaboration so in this session also i'll be taking care of uh, the holistic decision making in detail and the corresponding csr activities pertaining to it now decision making as you know is a process of selecting the best course of action in terms of having uh, the multiple alternatives every decision making produces a final choice and of course the final choice will depend upon so many factors which are ethically influenced which are you know having a lot of uh, diligence attached to it it begins when we need to do something but we do not know what like shopping deciding on what to eat where to dine whom to vote in the election so these are the examples wherein you need a diligence in taking the decision making and this uh, holistic decision making process which definitely helps us in taking the right kind of a decision <coughs> now definitely when you have large number of considerations uh, immense factors so the decision making is a very very difficult task so you need a decision support systems uh, for example you need uh, nowadays we have the computer aided systems also which help the decision maker in assessing the best decisions uh, ever and definitely the implications uh, as far as the the courses of actions are concerned are immense now how do we take decisions so there is a process attached to it the first is how to define a problem any decision making starts with a problem you have to define a problem what is the problem is all about the the nature of the problem the extent of the problem the magnitude of the problem the most significant step in any kind of a decision making process is about describing the decision which is called as identifying the best desired outcomes of the decision making process the one way of deciding the problem exist is to define the problem in terms of what we wanted and the expected situation and the actual situation is all about a problem is defined as a difference between the expected or desired outcomes and the actual outcomes this is a very critical uh, you know consideration as to how one defines a problem determines how one defines the causes and searches for the solutions and definitely when you are identifying the alternative solutions to it the decision making should not limit themselves uh, to the obvious alternatives or has worked in the past but one should be open to better alternatives also so your domain should not be very narrow the domain should be large the domain should be broad and only then the decision making and the outcomes which are desired would be the best as far as the decision makers are concerned because if we are narrow in our approach if we are very con you know uh, conservative in our approach the the desired outcomes which we are looking for are difficult to achieve now definitely uh, they they consider many alternatives in this regard and uh, realistically the decision maker should consider more than five alternatives in most of the cases because if we are only considering very few cases then of course it is very very uh, you know bad as far as the decision making is concerned because uh, the when you have open choices the decisions which you will take will be better now we have the next step that is you have to evaluate the various outcomes and identify the various alternatives there are so many alternatives which we are looking for 
and uh, the alternatives have to be uh, analyzed with due diligence. The, the analysis and the evaluation of the alternative is the you know the outcomes of which will give us the best way to achieve and to go in for the best decision making. Now, evaluating the alternatives, the decision maker should look for the uh, positives and the negatives of each alternatives and you have to weigh that whether uh, taking one way is going to have more of the positive outcomes or not. And uh, obviously, the, the you have to see the confidence scores attached to the uh, various alternatives taken into consideration and if definitely the scores which are more, the positive scores which are more will attach more value to it and of course, uh, will be taking care of uh, the, the alternatives which are best for the decision making. Now is the time to take a decision. So, the fourth step as far as the uh, decision making process is concerned is all about now making a decision. Now, you have uh, defined the problem, you have taken into consideration the various parameters, you have evaluated the alternatives. Now is the time to take the decisions. So, making a decision after evaluating the alternatives, the desired outcomes, etc. The manager screen the non-feasible alternatives and select the best appropriate alternative that will help to achieve the desired objectives. The alternatives can be selected through the various approaches. The first is the experience. Now, there is no substitute for the experience. Experience is perhaps the most important thing which has to be embedded in mind primarily to take any kind of a decision making. The past experiences if we have they serve as a guide uh, to take the best decisions ever and uh, the second could be experimentation. The experimentation is all about uh, you know the each alternative is put to practice and one which is more suitable is selected. This method is a costly and implementation of every alternative to decision making situation involves a heavy capital expenditure. Testing each alternative therefore is not possible. Also this method may be suitable in the present circumstances also. The selected courses of action should meet the future requirements also. The next is your research and analysis. Now, basically uh, uh, the research and uh, analysis will help us in searching the impact of the future variables on the present situations. You have to apply various mathematical econometric tools uh, which will help in finding out the best suitable alternative. This method is more suitable and less costly in terms of my time and money as compared to experimentation and experience. Now, is the next step that is to implement the alternative. You have taken care of many alternatives, open, it, open your mind, then you weighed the alternatives, uh, you know, so you have seen the positive and the negative scores, uh, the confidence scores attached to the various alternatives. Now is the time to implement the alternative. The selected alternative should be implemented with the least resistance from the organizational members. That is the, uh, the, op the alternative which you have selected should be accepted by all the members uh, in the organization. And as far as the resistance part is concerned, uh, the people should not resist the implementation of that alternative. So, you have to take care of uh, uh, the web like this that everybody says yes to what you want to implement. The implementation must be properly planned, uh, the due diligence must be applied to it and uh, everyone should be uh, you know allowed to be a part of that implementation process and make it more effective and fruitful. The implementation and alternative should ensure the following that it should be communicated to everyone in the organization. This is most important because whatever has to be implemented everyone should know that this is the criteria behind it. The changes in the existing structure uh, should be communicated to everyone, the alternative, the authority responsibility aspects should be communicated to everyone, the resources which have to be allocated to the respective departments for carrying out the decision making, the budget schedules uh, must be known to everyone and a committed workforce must be uh, there to promote the alternative which you have chosen. And the last is to evaluate the decision that is whatever decisions you have taken um, you know uh, is uh, regularly uh, by the you know implemented by the PAL members or not. The alternatives which have to be monitored uh, it is to know about the acceptance uh, by the organization and should be regularly monitored through the progress reports to see whether the objective for which it has been selected to achieve or not. If the members uh, you, you know if you want to make some corrections whenever 
uh, there are necessary changes you must implement those changes and implement those uh, part which the members are not ready to accept and such alternatives form the basis for the future uh, of the making. Now we are coming to the holistic approach in the decision making. The holistic means wholeness in an action. The management disciplines of the life, it sees the thing as a whole and not uh, in, in the small parts. So whenever any kind of a decision making is done as far as application of the holistic uh, decision process is concerned, it means you are taking into consideration all the various parameters into one account. You are seeing a better picture, broader picture, larger picture into view and no, no single point is uh, basically uh, left out. So, this is the concept of the wholeness and this is the concept of the, uh, the, the totality is concerned. The contemporary business environment is governed by the selfish motives and the managers want to maximize the profits and they want to maximize the wages. Suppliers want to uh, hike the prices which they want to take up and the shareholders they want to maximize the dividends. So, all the stakeholders they have their own concerns and the business everyone wants to maximize uh, their own interest. This is the interesting thing as far as the contemporary organizations are concerned. And if we relate the modern business to an ancient Indian thought, there is a need to introduce a holistic approach to management because when you take into consideration the holistic approach, it means that no particular stakeholder is left out. Everybody is embedded in one circle with a larger and a broader perspective in mind. That is uh, the wholeness uh, in the one aspect that is the organization as a whole and the decision making which has to be implemented taking into consideration the organization as one unit not in the small sub parts. So, uh, if you have this kind of a view that means you are advocating the growth and prosperity and, uh, and not uh, your selfish motives into account. And we should have this kind of a vision that, uh, uh, that we have a Vasudeva Kutumbu that is the whole world is our family. The whole world is seen as a family and decision making. The process is oriented to interest the companies only and the corporate members together they have uh, good for all the people. Holistic decision making is also called as the ethical decision making. Now you have to keep into consideration the success of three C's the capabilities, capital and connections. The business meets the market demand by having the capability, capital and connections to sustain the cash flow and generate the profit and these three C's enable a business to develop an attitude towards the competition. The business thrives on the truth, uh, on integrity and of course dealing with its customers, stakeholders and society at large and uh, it should develop the mutual trust among all the stakeholders and they should manage the expectations. Now, taking into consideration the aptitude towards the business is definitely the profit centric, but there is a need for the business to move from the profit centric to the purpose centric units only then it is going to make a significant difference. Today there is a professional uh, specializations in many aspects of the management for example, the human resources, the real estate, marketing operations and finance. However, it is still limited research on the essence of the management that what is the crux of the management, where is the main point of the management and the Henry Fuel divided the management uh, into five basic elements to plan, to organize, to command, to coordinate and to control. These are the primarily the major functions of the planning and according to Peter Drugger, the manager does his work by getting the work done by the others. So, business management also includes the communication commitment in addition to three C's and together with the five C's uh, the essence of the business management is achieved uh, to the significant extent. Now, in order to be effective efficient in the management one should prepare for the decision making and the implementation whenever the business opportunities arises. To make the business move from profit to purpose the managers need to acquire the wisdom from the ancient Hindu scriptures. So, in the last session also we talked about the Bhagavad Gita. So, let me give you a recap because this is the most important uh, subject which every student must understand. The Bhagavad Gita was first translated in English in 1785 by Sir Charles Wilkins and it is the world largest poem the Hindu epic and is a part of the Mahabharata written by the Rishi Veda Vyasa. Its written documentation were dated between 300 BC to 200 AD and it has 700 shlokas and is considered a 
little shrine in the temple of Mahabharata. The Bhagavad Gita is an episode in the war of the Mahabharata which covers the dialogue between Arjuna, warrior and Krishna, his chariot driver. Lord Krishna is one of the ten incarnations of Lord Vishnu, Hindu god of the growth. The Hindus believe in supreme being called Brahma and it is without the qualities and the attributes neither existent nor non-existent. It is universally consciousness in eternity. The Bhagavad Gita promotes the knowledge for the application of five C's in the, in the business management and the application of Gita can be examined from the perspective of the manager and who is a decision maker and our entire world is not real. It seems the real only for those who live in ignorance. It is bound by endless chain of cause and effect that is the karma to cosmic process called samara salvation or moksha is achieved through wisdom when the people forget their egos and achieve a perfect bliss. Hindus divine human efforts into four categories, the Brahmas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. Through each category is unique in itself and the quality of the individual action lies in the motive or desire that promotes the action. Now basically the actions uh, uh, are the wisdom oriented definitely and are not ignored by the knowledge and that can be acquired by learning. Wisdom is bought out of the insight. Brahman is the divine trinity comprising of Brahma that is a creative force, Vishnu that is the perversive force and Shiva that is the destructive force. All reinforce each other and exist concurrently and whenever the evil forces threaten to destroy the human values, the avatara or the uh, descents of the divine appears in the human form. In the Gita, Krishna uh, represents the embodiment of Vishnu to guide and awaken the world then to instruct. Similarly, when a student is ready, the teacher appears to awaken him. The supreme being is within everyone. We have to understand that we are supreme and everything what we have and what knowledge we have, we are the supreme and everything lies within you. So you have to awaken yourself in terms of the wisdom, in terms of the knowledge to attain every good thing uh, in the, uh, you know, the universe and that is the eternal bliss. And there is an Atman that cannot be destroyed by death, by decay or by corruption. And but everyone must understand this issue that it invites a cause of the suffering uh, if you are not able to understand these concepts. Our physical form is the result of an inside tension and therefore the person enjoys an outward personality while restraining a ego by managing the gunas. The gunas are the sattva that is the rightness that brings the happiness and harmony and uh, the ignites the action or activity that is the passion and the tamas that is the ignorance it leads to the confusion. So these gunas influence the psychological condition of a person and it is your own choice where you want to be and we can uh, you know sanctify our task and work by the detachment that is from the fruits of the labor, the devotion of the duty and preservance of the wisdom. However, there are distortions in our efforts through extravagant ceremonies, dogmas like routes of advancement for career development and the business habits especially in entertaining that make a person fails to understand his nature. The four categories of the human efforts apply to business also and every individual, uh, the manager and the company have an inherent aptitude. People engage in research, development, corporate planning and are Brahmas. The Kshatriyas are engaged in marketing, sales, investor relations, benchmarking etc. The uh, Vaishyas are in finance, logistics and trade related operations and Shudras are the service providers ranging from reception to the CEOs and the bureaucrats and the politicians make intangible contribution to the business with the value chain management. The attitude in the business is reinforced by the discipline, detachment, devotion and is the teaching of Gita. Now there are various categories of the human efforts that is the Brahmas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Sudras, they denote capabilities. The ritual dogmas habits are the routes to connections to competitors and to the supporters and uh, the individual management of the gunas is the most important capital and communication is the humble acceptance of the Krishna Atman guidance. The commitment comes from the discipline, detachment and devotions. The teachings of the Gita they deal with the karma yoga that is the ways of the selfless action, Jainaya's yoga, ways of the self-knowledge, 
bhakti yoga that is the ways of love and devotions. The yoga means the link, the meditation is a process while yoga is the result of connection. The yogas link the ordinary man with the divine and in today's worldly business there are four types of managers. Those who believe in doing right things and resist the change and those who relish the change and believe in doing the right things. Those who represent change and also get others to do the right things. Those who complicate the issues about being right and all these managers have to optimize their five C's to increase the company's profitability and productivity. The five C's and the holistic view to management. The application of five C's that is the capital, capability, connection, communication, commitment. It can provide a holistic view to the management in the following ways. Now, what is capital? Capital comprises of money, men, material and methods and their optimum combination is determined by the business motive. This combination is expressed in the business vision, mission and the core values. They have to be implemented with passion, compassion in order to increase the productivity. Otherwise, the capital remains a mere resource. Gita specifies the use of the capital in the business through the following teachings. Nothing is ever lost in the following one's dharma, but competition in another dharma breeds a fear and insecurity. While applying this teaching to the business, the entrepreneurs should think of only those contribution to the entire industrial growth. This will justify the existence of every business. Every business should explore its core competence and intellectual, you know, the capital. If every business explores and focuses on its own strength, it will promote the entire corporate world. Unhealthy cost cutting throat competition is very harmful for all the organizations, for all the companies and they will find it difficult to sustain themselves in the long run. So the crux is what? The crux is that that one has to consider one own dharma rather than in competition uh, than the other dharma. So what is the connotation and the concept and the essence of application of this in the business world? This signifies that if you concentrate on your own business rather than taking into consideration what others are doing, this is definitely going to make your own business wonderful because you are putting your all positive energies into your own business rather than having a cutthroat competition, having a, you know the, the bad uh, um, you know the, the concept as far as the other business is concerned, this is absolutely wrong. So what you have to understand that you have to focus in your own business, you have to understand your own strength and your own core competence and intellectual capabilities and this is definitely going to push you up. This is definitely going to, you know, help you to penetrate the market. This will also help in making your reputation, your profit centric uh, aspects, everything will be achieved. But you should not be putting yourself, your resources, your energies, they should not be diverted and directed in, in a wrong direction. That is putting the, uh, the cutthroat competition or maybe some cost cutting aspects. So this is not going to give you any kind of a mileage. In fact, what you want is to understand your own co core competence, your own capabilities. Only then uh, you are going to make your business uh, thrive and survive as far as the market forces are concerned. So you have the right to work, but never to fruit of the work. That is, you should concentrate on your own work rather than the fruits of the work. Every business should discharge it's part of its corporate responsibility without actually weighing its consequences in the monetary terms. That means you have to concentrate on your own efforts, you have to concentrate on your own work rather than concentrating on the results or the outcomes of your efforts. If you are going to concentrate on the outcomes of the or the efforts which you are going to put, this is not going to give you any kind of a mileage. What can give you a mileage is definitely your own efforts. 
So, just do your work, concentrate on your work, do wisely, take the best steps and leave it to God. That means, you should not be always uh, concentrating your efforts in the monetary benefits. You should keep it at the back end. The efforts performed without thinking of their rewards will automatically be rewarding for the companies. They will be converted into the productive outputs when consciousness is unified. However, all vain anxiety is left behind. There is no cause of worry whether things go well or ill. The managers are the trustees of the capital and the other resources. They should optimally use them to the best of their capabilities and leave the rest to be rewarded by the business and society. If their conscience is clear, their, fe their fears, uh, fears will vanish. So, till now we are discussing about the five C's and the holistic view of management. As a businessman, you have to understand the five C's very nicely. And out of these five C's, we have just seen the first C that is the capital. The capital uh, will talk about the men, material, money, machines and the methods. And we have seen that as a matter of fact, you should have your business vision and mission. You should have, you know, a passion to work, passion for your resources. And of course, the Gita specifies the use of capital in the business through the following teachings. Now, these teachings are very interesting. The first is which we have talked about that if you want your, your dharma to breed, do not have any kind of fear from the other dharma. Similarly, this teaching says what? That if you are concentrating on your own efforts, your own business, your own core competencies, your intelligence, the all ways it is going to have a profitable way for you. Not indulging yourself into the cross-cutting, cutthroat competition, antisocial practices, wrong practices, this is not going to give you any kind of mileage. So, this is the best teaching of the Gita into the business that please concentrate on your own core capabilities and the business. Thank you so much. With this note, thank you and thank you so much for giving us uh, this uh, session on holistic approach of uh, decision uh, making. Friends, you are requested to be with us as we are going to be back after a short break and we are going to discuss on corporate social responsibility in detail. So, keep watching us and yes, be with us. Thank you.
Hello friends, welcome back to this session. Friends, in this session we are going to talk on 5 C's and uh, holistic views uh, to management and for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studio Dr. Namita Rajput. Dr. Namita Rajput is a dynamic professor and currently she is uh, serving as a principal in Sri Aurobindo Evening College University of Delhi. Dr. Rajput has immense experience and through her experience we always get in-depth knowledge on various topics of uh, commerce as well as management too. So friends if you wish to ask question from uh, our expert Dr. Namita Rajput then do call us through our toll free number. Our number is 1-800-110-430. I repeat our number is 1-800-110-430. Friends you are kindly requested to ask questions relevant to the topic only. Now I would like to welcome our guest Dr. Rajput once again. Hello ma'am, welcome back. We are going to talk on 5 C's and the holistic view of management. Now there are 5 C's which are most important. We have first the capital, capabilities, connections, communications and commitment. So you will be amazed to see that what epic Bhagavad Gita is having for us as far as the connection of these five C's and the teachings of the Gita onto the implementation of the management is concerned. Now the first is the capital. Capital as you all know is a man-made resource which talks about the money, men, material and the methods. Their optimum combinations is determined by the business motive. Like if you are having the best combinations, the profits are on your way. This combination is expressed in the business mission, vision and the core values. They have to be implemented with passion, compassion in order to increase the productivity. Otherwise, the capital resource is a mere resource in itself. Gita specifies the use of capital in the business through the following teachings. Nothing is ever lost in the following one's dharma because you are concentrating on your own dharma. So, what you want is that the teachings are coming from uh, your own dharma, you are following it, so you do not have any kind of a fear. The fear comes one, when you are into the competition in another dharma and it is actually breeding the kind of insecurity and a kind of a fear. So now apply this teaching on the business. What is the essence and nuance of this? Like if we are concentrating on our own core competence, intelligence, we will definitely come out and we will be on the road of the success. But yes, if we are moving our business as to what others are doing into you know useless cost cutting or a cutthroat competition using malified intentions, using malified practices, it is not going to give you any kind of mileage. So the essence of the Bhagavad Gita teaching on to the, the, the first 5C of the holistic approach to decision making that is the capital that you should concentrate on your own core competence, intellectual abilities and the power. If every business focuses on its own strength, it will promote the entire corporate world. Unhealthy cost cutting, cutthroat competition is very harmful to all the companies and they will find it difficult to sustain themselves in the long run. You have the right to work but never to the fruit of the work. Every business should discharge its part of its corporate responsibility without actually weighing its consequences in the monetary terms. Efforts performed without thinking of their rewards will automatically be rewarding for the companies. They will be converted into productive outputs. When consciousness is unified, however, all vain anxiety is left behind. There is no cause of worry whether things go well or ill. Managers are the trustees of the capital and the other resources. They should optimally use them to the best of their ability and leave rest to be rewarded by the society. If their conscience is clear, their fears will vanish. So what is the essence? The essence is that 1. We should concentrate on our own strength. 2. We should not be bothered about our competitors. Number 3. We should not be you know concentrating on the monetary benefits we are just concentrating on fully and optimally using the resources the capital the men material money which is available with us rest we have to leave it on the society to see that how well we are managing how well we are responding to the corporate social responsibilities and the destiny will decide on its own 
we should not be only concentrating on the monetary benefits rather we should you know the ways which we are performing the ways th uh, by which we are putting our business should be correct morally second c when you talk about the five c's is the capability as the name suggests the gita specifies the importance of capability in the business through the following teachings now concentrate on the teachings which the bhagavad gita is giving us then we will implement this in the business world reshape yourself through the power of your will never let yourself be regarded by self will the will is the only friend of the self and will is the only enemy of the self so what is this you have to reshape yourself you have to reorient yourself you have to revisit yourself you have to make your own objectives reframing them in a correct form shape methods because reshaping yourself through the power of your will never let yourself be regarded by self will the will is the only friend of self and self and will is the only enemy of self so what you have to do is you have to make yourself selfless you have to make your will selfless etc the capability is the inner quality of the manager that makes their companies different from others it enables the companies to make competitive advantage over others by developing new perspectives to do the same thing better faster and cheaper some of the perspective that enable the managers to enhance their capabilities are to incorporate in the business dealings the methods of outsourcing corporate governance adhering to the social responsibility towards their stakeholders the new capabilities help in introducing the change in the organizational decisions in order to service the better market the wise see that there is an action in the midst of the inaction and inaction in the midst of the action their consciousness is unified every act is done with a complete awareness managers are completely aware of their actions whether they are right or wrong and of course they should never be satisfied with their work in pursuit of searching for the better options they should be constantly in look for some better decisions and should not be concentrating on just one uh, decision making they should be constantly look for better and better decision making by applying the judgment diligence etc no decision is completely right or wrong every right action may be something wrong in it and every wrong action may be having something right in it so we cannot generalize that uh, any action is right or all actions are wrong there are there could be some kind of uh, rightness in a wrong decision and wrongness in a right decision so we cannot generalize as far as the all decisions are concerned that all decisions are right or wrong the element of rightness is surely there in a wrong uh, decisions and an element of rightness is there in a wrong decision they should unite their consciousness with their work and be fully aware of what they are doing and in terms of their impact on the company and the society at large the wise ever satisfied have abundant all external supports their security is unaffected by the results of their actions even while acting they really do nothing at all while managers make business plans and strategies to review their capabilities in the areas of their core competence this helps them in retain or review the capabilities required to make their uh, business a success in the competitive world they do not depend upon the external support rather they are confident of their decision making abilities in changing the market scenario now the third c when you are talking about is the connections nowadays we say that it is not the work it is the network so developing connections networking is most important to achieve and have the best success in the life the capital capability exhibit the supply side of a business connections examine its demand side the connections include the physical links and intricate the personal networks they include 
the feed forward and the feedback market analysis. The feed forward analysis studies about the market intelligence and the feasibility studies to know the success rate of the company in the market with its present and the potential strengths. The feedback analysis reviews the impact of decisions on the customers whether or not they are acceptable in the market. So most importantly the connections that is the, the capital and capability exhibit the supply side. You must understand but what is the supply side of the business? It is how you how much you are capable and what your capitals are there. It supplies in your it exhibits the supply side. Whereas the the business connections uh, etc they exhibit the demand side. Now there has to be a very close interaction of the demand side and the supply side to have the best mirror in front of you. They include the feedback and the feed forward. The feedback and the feed forward are the most important activities uh, which the businessman has to analyze. The feed forward analyze studies about the market intelligence and the feasibility to know the success rate of the company in the market with its present and the potential strength. Feedback analysis represents and reviews the impact of decisions on the customers whether or not they are acceptable in the market. Now basically uh, when you want to see what you are you have to see a larger picture in the society. So you have to see the basic uh, acceptability in the market whether your products are acceptable in the market or not. In this context the Gita offers the following teachings with reference to their relevance in the business world and we are now talking about the connections and how the Gita teachings are applicable uh, to the business at large. Now every C has got one Gita teaching, Bhagavad Gita teaching into it and we have to basically implement that in the business decision making. And these five C's are most importantly uh, a part of it in this we first took about uh, that is the, uh, the capital. Uh, the capital is basically you have to uh, understand the, your own core competence this is the teaching. And in the second you have to see the capabilities that is how importantly you are uh, you know capable to take any kind of decisions. The third is your connections in this you have to see the feasibility the feedback and the feed forward related to it. And uh, now we are coming on to uh, the Bhagavad Gita teachings and how they are going to impact. Now uh, the Bhagavad Gita teaching which we are going to uh, talk about now is Om Tat Sat. Om is a road map or sadhana the spiritual practices. It symbolizes and specifies the states of consciousness which usually exist as realities. It purifies the mind and seeks the direct experience of the deeper truths. Tat is the supreme reality beyond human thought cannot think. Sat promotes the good and harmony. So Om Tat Sat, Om is the sadhana, Tat is the supreme reality beyond which the humans cannot think that's your own comprehensions and sat is basically to promote the good and harmony so if you take in totality in one frame om tat sat it is the uh, the the efforts which you put your dimensions which you take and what good you are giving to the society at large so the managers who manages om tat sat is fully aware of his consciousness and decides that their impact on the stakeholders. He practices this mantra and will engage in uh, the persons who practices this mantra will never engage themselves into any kind of unethical practices. He stays connected with the self and stakeholders and promotes the interest of all the people at large. So you have to practice as far as the connections are concerned Om Tat Sat. This is the biggest uh, teachings of Bhagavad Gita which is going to have a larger impact on your business actions. Om Sadhana Tat your dimensions and Sat is the 
overall good and the harmony which you are giving uh, to the others and the society at large. So, if you practice the Om Tat Sat, that means you are well aware of your consciousness, you are well aware of what you have to do and what is the impact of your Om Tat Sat on the business activities at large. So, you will be concentrating on your own self, your people, your objectives and basically all the stakeholders and you would like to promote every one for that matter. Now, next is your ASAP that is the truth and faith. The truth and the faith are the basis for all the work. Work without faith means nothing and does not bear the desired fruits. The faith should be the basis of all business activities. It can be built by the managers when they incorporate a culture of integrity in the business which takes care of interest of the people inside and outside the organization and no sincerity is vital for all interconnectivity between the deeds and the needs. The business needs to maintain a culture of integrity in order to maintain and sustain inside and outside. Now coming on to the fourth that is communication. Communication means what? While connections aim to maintain the personal networks, communication is a process through which the interconnectivities are maintained. The interconnectivities how they are maintained by the way of communications. Communication is the essence of the management. Gita focuses an importance of communication in the business world as follows. The Gita giving without thought of a return at a proper time in proper circumstances and not to a worthy person is sattvic giving. That is you have a vision, you should have a vision to select a person to whom you are giving and that part of giving is a point of no giving back. You have to understand, you have to select the right person to whom you are giving. If you are giving to an underprivileged person, that is a sattvic thought. So, the communication is all about the givings. The giving with regrets or in expectations of receiving some favors or getting something in return is rajasic. Whereas, giving somebody without any thought that he would return back is definitely what is called as a sattvic giving. So, the Bhagavad Gita gives us this teaching of sattvic giving, a sattvic thought that you are giving somebody without having any kind of a thought that that person is going to give you back. So, that is what is called as a sattvic giving. Whereas, if you give something in an expectation of giving it back, so this is what you call it as a rajasic uh, you know, thought. Giving at an appropriate time, in an appropriate circumstance to an unworthy person without affection or respect is tamasic. Applying the principles of Gita in the business communication, the business managers need to realize that quite often it is important in the business how the things have been said and not what is said. Though content is very important, but responses are determined by your timings and definitely the circumstances and not by the content and the duration of the message. The way facts are communicated has a very strong impact on the targeted audience. It is thus important that the receiver receives the information in a humble manner irrespective of whether he is worthy or unworthy of a message. Positive information at a proper time and in a proper circumstances gives a positive response and promotes the business dealings amongst all those who have the interest in the business. The last point of today is the commitment. Commitment of managers and owners to a business is the root cause of their success. In this context, Gita says, for a man of honor, dishonor is worth than death. A business can survive and sustain in the long run if its managers are committed to their duties. They should be committed to business decision making that are related to time sensitive issues. So, what we are concentrating here is that the fifth C that is the commitment is most important aspect of the decision making process. 
the commitment of managers is primarily required because if they are not committed whatever decisions they are going to take is not of any worth and uh, in, in this context Gita says what? The Gita says for a man of honor, dishonor is worth than a death. A business can survive and sustain only when in the long run if its managers are committed uh, to the prime duties which they are supposed to do and which they are delegated to do and they should be committed to any kind of a business decision making and they are related because they are all time sensitive decision issues. For not so important decisions also they should be committed through in a reduced degrees. Unimportant matters resulting in waste of resources should however be abundant. Not so urgent and unimportant matters can be delegated to their subordinates but yes the vital issues the most important things should be vested in the hands of the managers only. The entire business procedure should be transparent so that nobody has any objections to the way the business is conducted. Now coming on to the last point. Holistic decision making involves the following steps. Step 1, define a problem that is plus, identify alternatives, evaluate alternatives and make a decision. Implement the decision and evaluate the plus. Unless now until we have discussed a generic decision model followed in the business training programs, our concern is not just decision making, it should be a holistic decision making. The ethical component you must understand, the ethical component which you are choosing here uh, is all about uh, you know putting into consideration certain filters. Their purpose is to separate the sought after element from their environment. At key steps in the process, the decision maker can stop and run his considerations through these filters and separate the uh, ethical aspects from the remainders of the decision making. This ensures that ethical issues involved in the decision can be given a special consideration and in the academic uh, form the language for these filters is very very complex in nature and the academic for the most of the employees. To make it easy to understand apply these ethics filters the word plus has been adapted. P stands for the policies, it is consistent with the organizational policies, procedures and guidelines it definitely it cannot be against it. L is legal that is it is acceptable under the applicable laws and the regulations because uh, we have a judicial uh, supremacy in our country. So wherever uh, it is uh, found to be illegal is no way accepted in any kind of an organization. So for the sake of simplicity the first is the P that is the policy which has to be in coherence and uh, in compliance against uh, should not be against the organizational objectives at all. Second is your legal aspect and whatever you select and do should be legally you know acceptable and the third is your you that is the universal. Does it confirm to the universal principles the value the business organizations has adapted? S is the self. So does it satisfy the managers personal definition of right and good and fair? So the plus presumes effective communication with all employees to develop the common understanding of the organization, policies and the procedures as they apply to a situation and the applicable laws and the regulations should be a part of it and definitely the agreed set of universal values in this case. We have the empathy, patience, integrity and the courage. The individual's sense of the rightness fairness and the good arising from their personal value sets. So plus also presumes a formal mechanism provided by the organization to allow the employees access to a definite interpretation of the policies, laws and the universal values when their own knowledge of these plus factors is insufficient for them to make decisions with a high level of confidence. So the plus filters work as an integral part of the steps 1, 3 and 6 of the decision making process. Decision makers applies the four plus filters to determine if the ethic components of the decision making are, sp are specified. Step 1, define a problem plus surface the ethical issues. Does the existing situation violate any kind of plus consideration? Step 2, identify the available alternative solutions to the problem. 
Step 3, evaluate the identified uh, alternatives that is the plus excess their ethical impact. With the alternative I am considering resolve the vo plus violations and will the alternatives selected considered create any kind of new uh, plus consideration is very very important to understand. So, are the ethical trade offs acceptable? Make a decision is the fourth step, implement the decision is the fifth step, evaluate a decision making that is you have to define the plus sorts out of the new ethical issues which are emerging. So, does the resultant situation resolve the earlier plus considerations are these new plus considerations to be addressed or not. So, the user should realize that plus filters do not guarantee a holistic decision making. They merely ensure that ethical components of situations will be sorted out of the consideration which is also most important to understand because if you are ignoring the ethical aspect definitely this is not holistic in nature. So, the plus suggest a process of assessing the ethical impact of a decision making ultimately whether or not the decision meets the ethical standards is a separate issue. But yes, the ethical standards of the organization or ethical decision making is a matter of personal responsibility. After all, ethics is all about the choices. So, holistic management is a value driven management which has uh, the, the concept of values and ethics into it. Thank you so much. With this note, thank you and thank you so much for giving us this uh, session. Friends, you are requested to write to us at info.cec at nic.in for your any kind of query or feedback. We are going to meet again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again.